Hey my friends, let's talk about our Volvo XC60's all-wheel drive system, the T8 hybrid powertrain. To recap, for those of you who aren't complete Volvo gearheads, the front axle is driven by a roughly 300 horsepower internal combustion engine, and the rear axle is driven by a relatively modest and efficient electric motor delivering 87 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. Combined, they deliver 400 horsepower, and it is stupid fast. Basically, zero to 60 time, officially by the numbers, is 4.9 seconds. It is very, very quick for this efficient and large and heavy of a beast. Now, it develops a kind of interesting situation, though, in that there's no mechanical linkage between the front and the rear axle. It's an E all-wheel drive system. So the, the downside of a traditional 4x4 system, right, is the, the front and rear axles are locked together. They have to rotate together at the same RPM, and therefore you can't go around corners when there's raw pavement under your tires, especially in kind of uh, changing weather situations where it's kind of snowy or not, or kind of gravelly or not, or whatever. You know, you can't really use it until you're really sure that you're not going to cause damage to the transmission, the differentials, or even lose control in some situations. Now, on the flip side, an all-wheel drive system, which allows the difference of rotation of the front and rear axles because it has an open center differential, well, then the downside is power, of course, goes to the point of least resistance. And so when you're going over, you know, terrain that is much more tricky, you can end up having all your power go zipping out to a spinning wheel, and then you're kind of stuck and having trouble moving forward. And so the T8 hybrid powertrain has the potential to be the best of both worlds, guaranteeing torque to both axles like a 4x4 system, but also allowing variable wheel speed like an all-wheel drive system. So not simply just a variable limited slip center differential. Many vehicles have clutch packs which allow you to kind of control up to 50-50 torque split as they essentially go from not locked at all to 100% locked. But to really send torque to either axle depending on how much traction is there Essentially, no vehicle could do that except for high-end crazy rally cars and electric vehicles that have independent motors in the front and rear axle. So there's the potential here to get amazing performance out of this E all-wheel drive system. Previously driving our XC60, going on general desert trails and also up in the snow, traction and control have been fantastic. You put it into what's called all-wheel drive mode, which balances the torque delivered between the front and rear axle. And it just tracks like it is on rails, even on very slippery snow and ice. But I've really been itching to really test it on some more challenging trails, see where the limits of this hybrid system lie and uh, see how far we can push it. The Virginia Dale Mining District in the Pinto Mountains is located about 20 miles east of the largest marine base in America, just outside of 29 Palms, California, just a hop and a skip north from Palm Springs. Operated primarily during the interwar period, it was discovered and explored back in the late 1800s, but after World War II, that's basically all she wrote. The area shut down and faded away. Old Dale Road branches off from the main road, leading from Palm Springs up through Joshua Tree, and it runs across the flats for Ye Long and then jumps up about 500 feet of elevation and two miles flat to get over the ridge and up into the Pinto Mountains. And again, this road really hasn't been much touched in about 80 years. The last I drove it, it was only 70 years old. That was with my Pathfinder. And, you know, it was, it was challenging. Desert rain, the rarest of all phenomena here at Joshua Tree National Park. March 2012. Oh, dude, it's coming down. What say? Oh, say ye is that there's no way around it. We just got to put the left tires right on it and go right over it. Uh, maybe. You looked left, it was straight down the cliff, which is why I kind of went for it. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome sauce. Totally doable, although definitely a little bit of a sphincter clencher. 
Now with the XC60 this time around, I, I don't know if my memory is getting soft, but that trail was definitely a lot more challenging. It seemed like those 10 years had washed a tremendous amount of soil away to the point where there were many more rocks sticking taller out of the ground and much deeper ruts to traverse. But that being said, we had absolutely prodigious ground clearance. The air suspension on the XC60 can take your ground clearance from 8.9 inches all the way up to 10.5 inches, more than my old Pathfinder. And so when it came to just purely clearing rocks and having traction going over relatively level terrain, fantastic. No problems at all. The problems started basically when going up the significant uphill of Old Dale Road. Got to remember that the XC60 with all this super cool hybrid powertrain and the rooftop tent on top and us and all of our gear, we actually weighed it and it's just under 6,000 pounds. My old Pathfinder was probably 500 pounds less, something in that ballpark or so. So we were trying to haul a significantly larger amount of weight up the hill. And then the next problem is that when you go into off-road mode in the suspension and get that 10.5 inches of ground clearance, you're essentially pumping up the airbags to their maximum to give you that ride height. And so you're losing articulation. You're losing flexibility in the suspension. And so as you can see in this video clip here, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it looks flat. How much droop do you see in that driver's front wheel? Now, a lack of articulation is not the end of the world if you have a good limited slip differential or brake-based LSD, which is, of course, what most vehicles have these days, and, of course, what the Volvo has as well. And this is where the XC60 kind of let us down a bit. Basically, you know, we had ample amounts of power, both front and rear axle. Uh, the electric axle was doing great. We could spin our wheels all day long. But essentially, the brakes were not grabbing the spinning wheels effectively. It wasn't, I don't know, pulsing fast enough or grabbing hard enough. It just wasn't up to the challenge. It wasn't passing the torque across the wheels that had traction. And so to get around that problem, primarily what we resorted to is essentially adding rocks in to create little ramps for where the tires would be so that we never had that extreme articulation situation. Now, things that I could have done to help that I didn't do, and this is kind of funny because I, I was so stressed out about ground clearance. I was so stressed out about banging the underbody of my expensive Volvo into the rocks. And really, uh, I was uh, I was way over conservative. We never hit anything. At one point in the later part of the trail, Monica literally said as she was guiding me along and I was kind of pondering this rock and how to try to get around it. She was all just like, just shut up and drive over it. You have lots of ground clearance. Just go. And sure enough, more. What? What? Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah, a lot of plants. Huh. Yeah. I guess I'm not used to I'm not used to the ground clearance that I have. It was no problem at all. So uh, a couple of things I could have done that would have compromised my ground clearance. One would have been to air the tires down more. Now on the street, I like to run pretty high around 45 PSI or so. I did actually reduce them down to 35, but I totally could have gotten to 30 and maybe even 25 and essentially gotten more grip out of my BFG ATKO2s. Second thing I could have done is actually turn off off-road mode and reduce my ground clearance by about an inch uh, and essentially add a whole extra inch of suspension articulation by just going into all-wheel drive mode from uh, from off-road mode. That would have been a snap of the fingers, and I would have had more articulation. That might have just 
pulled me out of many situations when there was no rock underneath me. It was just an articulation problem. I probably could have pressed a button and crawled right out of it, but I didn't think of that until afterwards uh, because of the stress of the moment. And also just, again, I was overstressing out about ground clearance as a whole. And so what's the bottom line here? Is this E all-wheel drive system from Volvo, their T8 hybrid powertrain, is it the bee's knees combining the best of all worlds where it has you know, always torque on every axle like a 4x4 system with the flexibility of all-wheel drive and the balance and control like a dual motor EV. But of course, the range of a normal internal combustion engine SUV. Does it combine all these things to the most awesome package? Well, I mean, maybe yes, ultimately, but it's let down by the platform that it's in. Again, the lack of articulation and the lack of a quality brake-assisted limited slip differential in the front and rear axles really let it down. And it'll be interesting in the future to kind of see if other manufacturers deploy this type of system in other vehicles. We already have it in the Mini Countryman plug-in hybrid. We have it in the electric RAV4. But as far as a more off-road worthy vehicle, you know, Toyota, where's, where's the plug-in hybrid Tacoma? Where's the successor to the 4Runner with some more interesting engine options here for the North American market? That thing has been around about as long as the uh, Nissan Frontier pickup truck. That thing's ancient. So it'll be really interesting to see what's coming down the pipe and see if these systems are used more and on a better, more off-road worthy platform, what their ultimate potential will be. Another funny moment that happened is uh, we had a, an FJ Cruiser come up behind us. And so uh, we pulled off and let him go by us. And he actually hopped out briefly to kind of ask how we were doing and offer any help and stuff. And uh, anyway, so uh, we went ahead and there was a, a corner like, 30 feet in front of us. And, you know, we're kind of bouncing over the rocks, but not slow. And we got around the corner to the next kind of uh, zig of the uh, zigzagging switchbacking trail. It is no problem in Toyota. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an FJ. <laughs> he just goes. The thing is, is that he, uh -huh. he has about the same ground clearance we do, uh -huh. but he has way more articulation. Mm -hmm. And so while we just lift a tire up in the air mm -hmm. and have trouble with traction, yeah. whatever, he, he can flex right, and yeah. keep traction with the ground and he can, yeah. uh, <laughs> he's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just yeah. gone. I mean, he disappeared up the hill like a mountain goat being chased by a swarm of bees. <laughs> it was really cool to see. And, you know, I, I'm kind of envious of that, but in all honesty, you know, if my XC60 can be 80% as capable as that FJ Cruiser, but also be bigger, more luxurious, way faster, and more efficient, and a damn pleasant drive, well then, at the end of the day, I think I'm a happy camper. And speaking of bees, I'm going to go ahead and do a whole longer like video log of this whole trip, including the moment that we got swarmed by a huge cloud of honeybees. She's trying to shake the bees out. Really, Monica, you're just going to piss them off. Oh, my God. It was uh, LOL all day long, I assure you. And uh, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along on our adventures. Thank you for watching, everybody. Take care. Stay safe. <laughs>